Okay, here we go. This is JNA exposing sunlight at its finest. <laughs> I'm Joey. I'm Anthony. When Lauren mentions notoriety, a little over a year ago, we did a chart that showed we had $40 million in discretionary grants to invest in our different programs. So I think funders are looking for that can do attitude. And Sunline is definitely an agency that reflects that. $40 million. Yeah, $40 million. And what does she say about on electric vehicles? Uh, mindset, okay. especially at our public agencies. We're, we're, we're going to hear her, uh, her lies right here. Exercise all the time. Uh, so really great that you have the opportunity there. Now I see in the chat, we have a couple of questions. Uh, up at the top, I know Lauren had to answer to a couple of those, but maybe we can run through them real quick, uh, which was how many buses can you fill in a day? And Lauren, I believe you answered that, but what was the answer to that? How many hydrogen buses? Fill as many as you have and as much hydrogen as you have. It's a fast fill system. So it, it works like- <laughs> Okay, Anthony, stop it right there. Stop it right there. Okay, for a second. Stop it right there. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. Boy, there's like 10 Pinocchios right there, okay? You- do you believe this? <laughs> Did she say it was a fast fill system? Yes. Somebody, somebody, tell that to the, the to the fuelers, please. <laughs> Maybe we should get a couple of these fuelers on and and discuss this, because there's no such thing as fast fueling at Sunline. Do you know how long it takes to get when 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 that when that system breaks down, which it frequently does? Do you know how long it takes to get fuel into that damn thing? Some buses don't, they don't run. I mean, they want to convert to the whole fleet hydrogen. Okay, they, they need to fix this million, uh, multi-million dollar fueling station that they purchased. That's why they had that portable one that they took to Indio to, they were having to haul buses from Thousand Palms to, in, to Indio to get these buses fueled because Thousand Palms was, was dead in the water. And well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that dog and pony show in, in, in Indio. That big, that big grand unveiling of a trailer with a couple of <laughs> of a trailer with a couple of, of hydrogen tanks on it. That was that was only there for a couple of weeks, I think. And and then it was gone. It was gone. Yeah, because she said in the board meeting that they were trying to purchase one of those so they can they can provide hydrogen fuel to the east end of the valley which i i've never seen a car fuel hydrogen uh i don't know help me understand that no okay well hold on we we, we have we actually have a driver that's got a that has a that that owns a hydrogen car and and off the record i i'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more but i would urge you to to talk to him about owning a hydrogen car and what he goes through you want to talk about a disaster? Well, he's trying to get uh, uh, taxpayers' dollars and the count of this Lefor that's being paid big money to be a, a contractor. Or he's, uh, it shows him in a lot of the uh, financial reports. It does talk about uh, how much he's making. And from what I hear, uh, he was involved with a, a major lawsuit of Metro, uh, and he was doing the same, uh, I think, consulting uh, for that company, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we'd like to know how, how much money is being lined in his pockets. Oh, yeah, for, for, for many years. For many, he goes all the way back to the Oglesby years. And he's he's one of them that walks by you like you don't exist. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't say anything to you. Let's see. Let's see what she said. She talks about. And yeah. the actual vehicles, it's exactly as we would fill our CNG. So it's a it's a capacity question. Um, but it's not longer than and some people may be hearkening back to the early stations for light duty where people had to wait forever for the station to be able to fill one vehicle, slow fill, and then regenerate to fill the next. Um, that is no longer an issue with hydrogen stations. Um, but you want to make sure you buy the right equipment, which is something that we can help. <laughs> it's not good. Buy the right equipment. <laughs> buying, buying the right equipment. 
<laughs> I want to I want to hear what she says about the electric ones. That's that is that is uh, that's the important one because that's what they're pushing desperately here. I mean, I just saw and I just read the news. It was on Facebook news. Newsom is worried about the state not having enough, uh, enough electricity, which is why they want to keep a nuclear power plant here running through 2025. But yet they're pushing. They're pushing and pushing everybody to get an electric car. Could you imagine the shit show that we're going to be in? I see what you said. That's incredible. So it sounds like it doesn't really impact your operations that much because you can work the way you need to work. Uh, the other question, which uh, Lauren, thank you for answering, was how many kilograms a day does a typical transit bus use, which is about 32 to 35? Um, and that would all depend on your route structure and, you know, what kind of terrain, you know, as you guys know, with battery, all battery electric as well, sort of the environment you put these vehicles in can change the way you get economy. Um, one thing to remember about our fuel cell buses versus our CNG buses, we get about twice the economy from those vehicles um, per kilogram or GGE of hydrogen. So I wouldn't say kilogram, but gas gallon equivalent, which is what we all use to manage and track um, what we're getting as economy. So um, one of the reasons, if I didn't state it earlier, that we're really looking at hydrogen being our um, first foot for zero emission, just because the way we operate as a CNG shop doesn't change very much for operating as a hydrogen shop. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> <Anthony>. <laughs> <laughs> okay well she she also left out the the, the mechanics of the vehicle the, no two vehicles that are running on cng will burn the same way this has been an ongoing debate for for years nobody knows more about running out of gas in a bus than me i'm telling you nick knew that vincent knew that doyle who's no longer here knew that because these people sat with me many nights in dhs out of gas with a bus because they when you don't want you to leave Vista Chino and Ginotri, you're, you're past the point of no return. And when nobody answers the radio and you've got a bus full of kids that have to be home by a certain time because of curfew, uh, you've got a problem. You got to pull at a certain time. Man, you're done. You By the time you get to Pearson West, that thing is done. So they, they, they're saying uh, uh, about uh, the hydrogen uh, vehicles and um, I thought natural gas was a, a clean energy. I thought, how, how is it that they're getting away? Do research on it. Do, do research on that. Huh. Do okay. research. I would, I, would, I would go do in-depth research on CNG. And, and I'm telling you, I, I did. And, and I did a lot of in-depth research on that. And, you know, a lot of stuff with that is really hidden. There's, there's not that much... Uh, uh, good studies on that is is what they push. I think there's. I think the. I'm not a scientist. I'm not claiming to be a scientist. I'm not an environmentalist by any means. But common sense will tell you that that and and just a little bit of knowledge, you know, when you when when that when that is burned. How much? How much? Uh, uh, how much pollutants or whatever you want to call it does that hold in the atmosphere? I heard it was a lot more than the dirtiest of diesels. Oh wow! They're 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 just trying to get all that money because, like Lafleur said, forty million dollars. Yeah, 40. yeah. Lafleur Lafleur said it all. I mean, forty million bucks. Wow. Let's let's hear what what else she has to say. Is yeah, continue. Adam Chavez, are you looking for funds to continue the West Coast Center of Excellence in order to? Or excuse me, in order to have materials and facilitators to support agencies that want to take advantage of the training for and sure. our tuition fees being applied for the training. Thank you for asking that, Adam. I mean, we've been invested in to build the center and we're going to build it. We've been invested in to create a coursework catalog, um, but that needs to change. We have to keep introducing product. New things are being um, developed every day. We need to start introducing infrastructure content and training. Um, we will need a new set of energy managers in transit at some point as we move forward. And so there are future needs that need to be- There's another job. Even today, yeah. and then operating it. Um, we believe this is like a California asset. I mean, California has put itself on the map by um, 
by propagating these two rules. And now we have to find ways to make sure we have a workforce ready to assume these jobs, not just those that need to transition, but you know, there used to be two tracks when you were a young person. You went to trade school, you went to college. I mean, we kind of lost that trade school um, pathway, which um, is, is not an issue, but we believe needs to be recreated. Many folks would like to get some training and get a job on their way to college and on their way to something perhaps in the... That, that's when you have favoritism and they have no yeah. knowledge of it. And this is where she's lining uh, her, her crew to be able to gain the big bucks when no... No, this is no. what you call cherry picking. <laughs> cherry picking? <laughs> cherry picking right here. This is nepotism at its finest that's going to begin. This is when, you're right, this is when, when she starts to, to pick and choose who, who they want to put into these key spots to make, and make all this money. Yeah. Yeah. Mental studies. And so we'd like to create that pathway. Um, for millennials or others that are coming out of high school and looking for a trade, Brittany, looking for a way to start work right away. Well, well the, are they talking about Brittany? Is this before they hired Brittany? It must be. <laughs> work on their college dreams um, while they have a job. So we are looking for funding for it. We believe California should be looking more closely at what we're doing and helping us to fund the operation of the center. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. I have a question here from Yao Chun Chao. Could the Sunline team comment on the hydrogen scale up, excuse me, hydrogen station scale of practice and how to balance between stranded assets and the total construction top cost over time? Ooh, Yao Chun, she's got to send a stunner in there. That's a, that's a, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> So that is why in our ICT plan, you would see sort of, the, and our plan is available on our website. Um, CARB also has published plans that you can look at if your agency hasn't yet finished theirs or is in the process. Um, but it is important to look at cost. Um, that's why you see an increased number of BEBs in our ICT plan so that as we were building infrastructure for fueling and milestones to do so with fleet complement, we could pepper in a few BEBs to buy some time along the way. As I mentioned earlier, we do have an amazing opportunity um, to double our production and that process project is going to commence soon. So we may be flipping the script on our hydrogen um, vehicle deployments versus BEBs. But I want to be clear, we believe that both propulsion types have a place in your zero emission transformation. And so, you know, it's just all about the numbers. Um, that's a really, I could talk about that question probably for you hear? I, I wonder who's asking those questions. It's probably one of her. Well, that's, that's it's group. not her. It's not her. She's, she is just the messenger uh, uh, of the agenda. She's just, all she's doing is selling a bill of goods. Yeah. Cause I, that's, I think that's maybe, all it is. Maybe. Part can you hear it? Yeah. Can you, can you hear her? Can you? Listen, I want listen real closely and listen to how they shovel it, how they shovel it to, to these people. They really <laughs> want to push this shit that doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, this is what the board needs to know. This is an agenda that they're pushing. Maybe we should go to CVAG meetings. Yes, SCAGs. We need to go. Well, to SCAG is Southern California Association, Association of Governments. That's the big tamale. <laughs> but what the other big tamale with with Sunline directly and exclusively is CVAG, Coachella Valley Association of Governments. Oh, we need to put that on our agenda. Yes, I think that's important because these are the these are the bozos that 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 buy into this. This is ridiculous. Crazy. I mean, come come on. Go ahead. I mean heard it correctly and I don't know if my colleagues have anything they want to say on it. Um, well I, I just want to say you know as uh, Chen knows it's a real balancing act uh, because it's not as if we go to the bank and get money out when we need He's it. reading that script. So we have to balance. <laughs> he sure is. Funding with Look, hey, pay, pay, pay attention to his eyes. He's reading that script. Let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. <laughs> look, look at, he's reading that script and look at Lauren. She's looking at him. You better say it right. 
Oh, you're my beat. Get your walking papers. Well, that's all, all that. <laughs> huh? All that Lauren is, is, is delivering. Uh, uh, she's reading a script too. She's delivering the, 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 the goods and LaFleur is, he's reading the script. He's going right along with it. <laughs> well, he's the salesperson. <laughs> yeah. We're going to call him the car sales. He's, these are salespeople. That's what they are. Okay. The let's see what he says. The agency. And so that's something Sunland's done a great job of, and we will continue to do. Let's but rewind that. Not as if we say on it. Okay. Look at his eyes. Well, well yeah. I, I just want to say, you know, as uh, Chin knows, it's a real balancing act uh, because it's not as if we go to the bank and get money out when we need it. So we have to balance the availability of funding with the operational needs of the agency. And so that's something Sunland's done a great job of, and we will continue to do. But as Lauren mentioned, our ICT plan is a plan. There's things that need to happen. And so we're um, encouraged that we're making those things happen. But, you know, you, you, you don't control your own funding resources, especially now that we have COVID and all these other things that are influencing, influencing the operation of transit agencies. So ideally the plan would go to get together perfectly, but we just really can't like go to the bank and get the money and write a check, you know? That would oh, be um, There's a question in here about um, supplier and that's a really good point that I probably didn't cover as um, more, m most more as I should have. And that is, is, when you become a fuel provider, there are LCF and REMS credits, depending on what your designation is. And so Look at looking eyes. at LCF yeah. and looking at the revenues that you can gain, um, that is why we're driving the public side of our station. So for us to collect those credits on our, our, our um, nameplate station of 900 kilograms, we need a public station, which we have. Um, but we'd like it to be 700 bars so that we could reach more end users. So there is- Wait kind a of minute, where, where is this public pump at that they're talking about? Division two. That, that oh. I thought that was pumping CNG. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, it is, it is. It, I don't think there is no, there's no public. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Thousand Palms, because they take hydrogen buses out there oh. to fill them, don't they? But is that, is that uh, public? Is that we can fuel our cars there? No, you cannot fuel a car. Uh, and this goes right back to what I was telling you about an operator at Sunline um, who has one of these, these ridiculous idea vehicles. Uh -huh. uh, you can't put fuel in the car. You can't put fuel. He has told me many times you cannot. That car, he said, sits empty at his house because the 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 closest place that's for the public to put fuel in it is in Riverside in Corona out this way. So I had asked him, I said, well, can't you, can't you put fuel in it at Sunline? He told me no, because the, the, the filling nozzle is entirely different for a bus than a, than a, than a car. It's so she, something with the temperature of the fuel that goes in. She, so she sounds like, like she's going to be providing fuel for, for vehicles not for buses i mean because they have a plant for buses but she's, she's in business she's in business to sell fuel she's a, like a a gas station proprietor that's that's what this is becoming it's a, it, that's what they are trying to turn this into is into a service station like an old-fashioned shell or chevron where, where, where they sell fuel let's see what the hell will happen to public transit where does this tie into public transit well these into are, into providing bus service well, these buses are breaking down on a daily basis and people are not, it's not a reliable service. Uh, I think uh, I will start maybe interviewing uh, individuals um, on the, on, on my own time. Uh, I was just told, I was just told the other day that, that uh, the sundial van gets about 200 miles to a tank of gas. Okay. So what the hell do you do when you leave India? going east on the 10. The next place is Blythe, which I'm, I'm sure they have CNG, but who knows if they have hydrogen. You know damn well that California is like in a bubble. So they might not, hydrogen just might not be readily available 
in other parts of the country. It's only until you get to La La Land here where that where that agenda flies. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're saying so it's, it's, 90, it's 90 it's 90 miles. 90 miles? It's 90 miles from Indio to Blythe. Okay. You're going uphill. 90 miles in a, and with gasoline is very doable. But you know the fuel economy changes once you put mountains and in, in grades into the into the equation. Just she said it herself. Yeah. She just shot her own foot. Creation <laughs> and how do you do that to position yourself to most help the industry and help the funder that funded your project by connecting into other goals that that funder may have, whether it's CARB or CEC or others. So um, we're happy to talk with folks about the way we look at that um, so that we can most benefit from the revenues we can generate from a project and therefore put more transit on the street. So all of our revenues go into transit services and make us less likely to um, fall into issues when subsidies are changed because we have this little business side of ourselves that we're operating under. The other thing I would say is um, understanding your JPA and your internal structure is important when you're looking at revenue generation. And we could talk more about that if anyone has questions later on, they're happy to reach out to folks. And I think the uh, having the West Coast Center back. What a joke. What a what a what a joke! It's a pony show. Gets yeah, this, this information. This is somebody that, being uh, sold a shitty, shitty bill of goods. Yeah, being so they're 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 uh, they're really pumping to get money, but they say they don't have money for us. Yeah, well, they, they want they want a guest. They want a what? And uh, they want, that's what they want. Say it again, Joey. Where's they want a gas station? Yeah. Where the hell is all this money going? To their pocket. This information once they sign up at the West Coast Center of Excellence for a training course. So it's so important. Do you want me just to go to the next question, Joe? Yeah, yes, please. Thank Joey, you. I'm talking question. to you, Joey. So <laughs> one of the about yeah, go to the next question. Uh, the facility <laughs> is because we've been doing hydrogen for so long, it was a little easier for us. Um, and so one of the things, if your transit agency has a station, a permitted station inside, you want to start building on that moving out when you're going to do a different application. Um, our hydrogen production is fairly, uh, so I'll give you an example, 900 kilograms a day on a 60 by 60 pad. That's not that large. And that pad actually allows us to scale up at least another rectifier unit and another module. So we could actually go up about another four to 500 kilograms on that building that we have right now. So I hope that gives you a little idea of the real estate you need for 900 kilograms per day. Um, Is she talking about the, the building that they just built that doesn't work? Can increment. Uh -huh. Is she talking about the building they just built that doesn't work, that yeah. facility yes. that does not work, that they cannot achieve 100% fueling capacity from? <laughs> that six by six pad that that she's talking about. <laughs> this this must be an old old video. This this goes back, obviously, within within a two year mark. Yeah. Well, they're talking about COVID, so. They're on well, yeah, because the the refuel, the refuel came out right when COVID did. Remember, they screwed us with the they screwed us with that. That we had to explain it all to the passengers. Remember? Yeah. Well, they weren't going to put their people out there to deal with the dead sickness. To charge <laughs> yeah. 35 or 45 vehicles, um, you're probably going to need a lot more real estate than a 60 by 60 pad. So hopefully that lets you. And then just lastly, I mean, we were a C&G shop. So the changes needed to be made to our shop and facilities were minor. Uh, you're just looking for a, a couple different sensors and we do both. So we have CNG buses and fuel cell buses in our shop. So that change isn't major as well. Now, if you're a diesel shop, you'd have a little bit more going from solid fuel to gaseous fuel to get up to speed with um, how to get your facilities, but it's all doable and other transit agencies have done it. So there's a playbook available for that as well. And hopefully that answers your question, Joy. <laughs> he doesn't look too I'll happy. Really ask this, answer this no. Question. Has electric utility been helpful with their... Yes, <laughs> they, they don't look too happy. They, they, the guy in the where it says Somerville in the back of him, he, he, he yeah. looks like you lying sack of... 
Yeah, well, I, you know, not everybody is this dumb. Okay, not everybody's going to buy into this. Yeah. Only, only liberals <laughs> buy into this. <laughs> She's even no. laughing. Check and see if they're on the call. Um, uh, we can say uh, unequivocally that we've had to work around some things. Uh, we've we've not stopped engaging. We've not stopped trying, but uh, they are not necessarily focused on the same objectives that we are at some times. And so we've uh, we've been fully engaged, and uh, we're trying to get the most out of that. I think one of the things, and if there's a utility, I know one's on the phone, but they're already um, really focused on working with the industry and working with transportation. But I think that what my message to utilities has been is that this is a brand new customer base, a new one they haven't had in probably a couple decades, as far as the electrification of transportation for California and America. And we don't buy our fuel by the minute. We generally lock in long-term contracts to buy our CNG, to buy our diesel, to buy gas. And that's the way we work. And that's the way any transportation provider works. Whether Wait a minute. She said we buy diesel? I didn't know we have any diesel vehicles. Is that what she said? Yeah, let's go back. Re re go back. That's yeah, what I what thought she said. What my utilities has been is that this is a brand new customer base, a new one they haven't had in probably a couple decades, as far as the electrification of transportation for California and America. And we don't buy our fuel by the minute. We generally lock in long-term contracts to buy our CNG, to buy our diesel, to buy gas. Yeah. And that's the way we work. <laughs> and that's the, probably a couple decades. I think she's giving an example of just transit altogether because otherwise it's a contradictory of CVAG. We don't have diesel. And I think it's, I think it's funny that, that we have that new, di that new clean, super clean diesel pusher that just sits back there because they have to rely on the diesel for when the CNG craps out. That's why they have that bus. That's a contingency bus to go to San Bernardino. Oh, is that what that is? That's why they have that. That, di that diesel pusher is nice, man. Boy, that thing hauls ass. <laughs> that is 100% reliable. They that they have that on standby. That's why that's there. Oh. They don't tell you that though. No. They don't tell you that. for California and America. And we don't buy our fuel by the minute. We generally lock in long-term contracts to buy our CNG, to buy our diesel, to buy gas. And that's the way we work. And that's the way any transportation provider works, whether it's buses or over the road trucking or FedEx. And so I think that utilities offering us these cable life deals where they're gonna freeze our rates for five years doesn't help us with a 12 year bus and doesn't help us really plan on how we're gonna execute and operate and pay for our fleets over time. And so- We have buses that, that are long, long over 12 years old. I got blockative here, I've huh? said it. There's some that have the well, expired uh, tanks. I thought oh, yeah. it was supposed to be for 10 years. Yeah, we've, we, we've got buses that are well over 12 years old. Yeah. Times in front of utilities that they need to start thinking of their product as fuel and energy, um, but fuel first instead of just energy, and start to understand how transportation markets work in order to serve and actually benefit from where we're going in the electrification of our fleet vehicles, whether that be all battery electric or fuel cell electric vehicles. And I think until they start thinking that way and understanding it's not our first rodeo, so we understand getting our internet for free for five years or HBO max for two years. And then all the prices change probably isn't going to work long-term for the types of deployments that could happen in California. Long answer, hopefully not too controversial, Joe. Oh, that was great. You know, the, 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 the whacked out part is, is, you know, at some time, at some point, this woman will depart Sunline. She'll end up like Oglesby in some other city wrecking that system running it into the ground hiring pit bulls and and and, and dogs to, to attack its employees spending money attacking its employees doing the same things that have happened to sunlight yeah that's the shame part i mean and, these and they'll people, give her a severance pay these, these people's careers should be over i mean 
these these videos should follow this 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 regime anywhere they go. Same thing with Lafleur. He's he's another one. I mean, he he dates back to Oglesby. It's it's why it's beyond me why Roger Snowballs didn't didn't uh, clean house. Why didn't why didn't he get rid of these these jamokes? Back then, the, these these uh, Oglesby holdovers. They're getting paid. They know somebody. They yeah. know somebody. Man, in the chat. Sunline has really been innovative in technology adoption, team training, and business practice. Thank you so much for being uh, such a leader. Another hey, question, we, but thank you. We have jobs open. If you're excited and want to do something different, send me your resume. Um, we're always looking for exciting people who um, have want no to education. Themselves and <laughs> yeah, they have no education. <laughs> Nobody that has nobody that has any experience at all <laughs> come, come right on in and, and make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Let's not let's not ask our existing workforce. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, uh, youngsters that that work at Sunline that that may have some sort of knowledge, that may have some sort of aptitude. I know that that I, I have expressed interest in, in maintenance there many times. I I, I had to rebuild. My father is a retired mechanic. I, I was taught how to rebuild lawnmower engines by the time I was 12. And by the time I was 16, I had to build a damn car engine. You know, I mean, that's how it was in my house. They, they don't give me a chance at all. I, I, was a, I was a supervisor and a trainer for American Airlines once upon a time ago when I was young. They, they, they didn't give me the opportunity at all. Not even when I first was hired, they didn't. You know who they hired? A part-time female package handler from, from UPS. That goes to show you. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need any experience. You just need to be part of the clique. Yeah. Work in yep. an area that maybe they haven't been able to. Um, but again, that entrepreneurial, we really try to have a can do spirit about things. Um, and I think that people that come here um, see that. I mean, I came here, I never thought I'd be here seven years. Um, more excited today than I was the first day I got on the property, but that's yeah, it's really about this agency and sort of what the leader she said it right know, there. Um, <laughs> She said it right there. She just answered everybody's question. She said she didn't think she would be here seven years. Why is she here for seven years? Probably because she makes nearly half a million dollars. Yeah. Does yeah. she live in the desert? Does she live locally? You know, I think so. That's what I heard. Because remember Oglesby and, uh, and uh, Tommy Green lived right over there where the 70 runs. Remember right over there at uh, Adams and uh, Miles. Adams and Miles, yeah, yeah. I see how uh, that makes us successful. So it's not one thing. So people say, "What makes us successful?" It's not one thing, um, but it generally is the team understanding the importance of the projects we have on the road and working with our OEMs like Ballard, like Proterra, like BYD, like New Flyer. Um, we can't be at odds with each other. We can't buy something and expect it to run without us investing our time and energy into it. And sometimes our industry has the idea that it's under warranty, fix it. Really, it's our opportunity to understand it, to the stamp. Well, they, they don't even train the mechanics to- uh, Yeah, exactly. Fix these and, new she, and she said, she said, if it's under warranty, then fix it. Then why, if that's the case, then why do we have Excelsiors that pop out of gear? Why do we have buses that shut off in the freeway, in the middle lane of the freeway, that, that shut off when you make turns? Why, why is that? Why did, why did we have a brand? Why did I have a brand new bus the other day and the gearbox went out? See, it's under warranty. How come they See, not it's, did you, did you hear? She just, she, she mentioned BYD. I think she mentioned, I know she mentioned Ballard. Yes. They're pushing this agenda. I, I would urge people to buy the stocks in these companies. Yeah. I, I know I, I own stocks in Ballard. I've watched it go up and down. I even own the Chinese BYD stocks. You know, I mean, I think it's I think it's shameful that Sunline cannot find electric buses that are made in America. I mean, do you do you know that when 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 uh, when shop can't fix that electric bus and BYD locally cannot fix the bus, they they haul in a crew from China with a translator. That Chinese man will be in the back working on on the bus and. 
he talks to the translator. The translator talks to me while I'm driving to tell me what, to, how they want it driven. That, that needs to, that should stop right there. Well, they had one that was made in America that the one with the flag on it, um, was it F? That's what they say. That's what they say. That was FC3. That's what they say. That, and that one breaks down all the time. That's because it's it's assembled in America. It's not made in America. It's assembled here. Oh, okay. With the I got to charge my phone, bro. Learn it as they're doing it is what we're we have done. to do for the future. And we haven't always been that great at that. But that's where we're going to go. And that's what the West Coast Center of Excellence hopes to achieve by providing that to all each right. of the transit I'm, I'm done. I'm not done. I'm done listening to their lies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because... She she's gonna build this center of excellence. That's what that's gonna go where the where the lounge is at now, the old lounge. Uh -huh. They want to train people there to fix these buses. That that's fine. And Danny, that's great. And I, again, I think that the first dib should be the employees that work there. They should send out a uh, a questionnaire. If you're interested in this, then then let us know. I would be willing to do that on my own on my own time. Everything. Because I'm interested in that. I have a, a mechanical aptitude about me, you know? How come they don't do that? How come they don't, how come they won't offer us? A, why are we not good enough for that? Because we're not part of the clique and we're blackballed for speaking up. These are, these are, these are what you call the, the old boy club, you know? I mean, the good old boys here, good old boys and girls. <laughs> where they should they cherry pick people for these for these these spots yeah that's where this is this is like dealing with school board meetings like it's like dealing with the union it's like it's the same garbage yeah. it's the same problems yeah you know she's she's reading she's reading she's reading uh prompts or, or uh she's reading a script okay. same thing with like lafleur they are they they didn't write those papers who wrote those who wrote those that research it's certainly not her you could you could hear she said herself she's not educated she came from the army she she ran something in delaware she didn't go to college or any of that shit she's not educated into these these positions well uh this is uh our time's up joey uh this yeah. is j and a exposing sunline's corruption at its finest i'm at its finest bro I'm Anthony. I'm Joey. And we'll see you at the next one.